Okay, guys, so welcome back. We have just one hour and we have to cover a lot. So let's have the quick look what we are going to cover. So uh, I'm going to give a quick introduction about the program. And after that, we'll touch on the jump on the technical part. I'm going to cover elastic network interface. Then we we'll look into the security group in very, very detail. Then I will do the live Q&A session where I'm going to share the Slido where you can ask your question and then I will have the quiz for the today. So this is plan for today. So quick introduction about the program. So this program is about AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate. So I have created this uh, Google Sheets where I have listed all the concept that what you need to know to pass AWS certification and here if you see around 80 concepts are already recorded and these are available on my YouTube channel so you can go ahead and follow from there and if you see in today's live session I'm going to cover topics from here so maybe this network interface and AWS security group I'm going to cover because this is going to consume around 30 minutes and then we'll do the live Q&A and then we have the quiz. So what I'm expecting, you people must have completed those videos. If not, no worries. At least I was expecting you have completed the networking part. So if you have completed the networking part, then this session will be quite easy for you. If not, then it will be a little bit challenging. Anyways, no worries. I will try to give my best to make you understand. If all good, give me thumbs up in the chat box and we'll get started. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. <clears throat> okay, so before we start, let's have a quick recap what we have covered in the previous session. So if you have attended the previous session, so what if we understood in the previous session, we understood. Uh, to create anything in your AWS account, we need a AWS account. And what is AWS account? AWS account is nothing but this is container where we host our application and we create AWS resources. Once you have AWS account, you have to ensure you select the AWS region and the region where you want to host your application because AWS has around 36 AWS regions. Then second thing, what you will be doing, you will be creating a network and network in AWS is called VPC, Virtual Private Cloud, VPC. Then to create VPC, we need two things. We, name, we need name of the VPC, then we need CIDR and CIDR I have covered very in detail in previous to previous session. Then we have also created the public subnet. So we created two public subnets and two private subnet and two data subnet. And we also understood what is purpose of the public subnet and what is purpose of the private subnet. To make public subnet public, we need two things. First things we need a ICW that's called internet gateway. Then we need a route table and this route table we do some create some routes to know only public subnet or maybe private subnet, how to send the traffic. And this is something we have covered in the previous session. After that, we also launch a EC2 instance. Then we access this EC2 instance from the internet. So this is what we have covered so far. Little bit, we also looked into the NAT gateway. NAT gateway. So when you have any resources and services inside your private subnet then how this will access EC2 instance sorry how it will access internet for that we need NAT gateway. Today we are going to the next topic and that is elastic network interface. What is elastic network interface? Elastic network interface is a logical networking component in your VPC that that's represent virtual network card. 
so this virtual elastic all other cloud specific term must be are important for you to understand what is network card network card as name suggest this is the networking device and card is we can this is a hardware this is networking hardware this is attached with our laptop our servers when you talk about this network card this network card in the cloud is called virtual network card now question comes why do we need this network card we need network card to communicate with the network let's assume this is your vpc inside this vpc if you are creating any aws resources and this aws resources not able to communicate either with the internet nor any other resources within the network if it don't have the network card so network card is needed to connect and talk with the other the network device so on your laptop there is also network card when you connect the cable then this get connected with your network card and that's where it connect to the outside of the internet and if you take another example around 2006 when i got my first laptop then my laptop don't has the wifi because it was it don't have the wifi network card okay so again if you understood network card is needed to connect with the network so similar in the cloud in your vpc if you want your resources within the network that connect with the outside network or inside the network we need virtual network card so when we create a network card so in cloud we call it elastic network card and what it has so it has a description this name and the description is very simple along with that it will have the private ip address it will have the elastic ip address and also mac address along with security group now let's go back to the previous session in previous session we have created a ec2 instance and this ec2 instance we has the private ip address and also we got a public ip address so actually where this ip address was present in our ec2 instance it was at the network interface so when we create ec2 instance and it has the default network interface and also this is called primary network interface and on that network interface we had that private ip address we had that elastic ip address and also mac and along with the security group so now question comes which aws resources has the network interface So almost all AWS resources which connect with the different resources or need to connect with the network which has network interface. This is called ENI. So example, EC2 instance, Lambda function, RDS, all those resources need network interface. Now let's understand again from the example. So here, this is how this looks like. So in previous example, we had the VPC. Then within the public subnet, we have launched the EC2 instance. So when you launch EC2 instance, it will have this private ENI, and this private ENI will have the private IP address. It will have the public IP address, and also if you create security group, it will go with your private ENI. So this is very important point from your exam perspective as well. now let's go back and see what else we have with the network interface so a resource could have the multiple network interface so again if you go on the previous screen so here this is ec2 instance so when we create a ec2 instance it will have the primary network interface and again if you want you can create another network interface that's called secondary network interface again the secondary network interface will have everything 
what we have with the private network interface like private IP address, security group and IP address. Now couple of more points with this network interface. This network interface only exists in same ability zone. And again, this is very important for your AWS certification perspective. So when we create network interface, network interface scope is your availability zone. So we know when we create AWS resources, AWS resources has the scope. What is scope? A scope is where your AWS services reside. So EC2 instance, VPC, right? So when we create VPC, so what do we do? We select AWS regions. So VPC has the scope region, right? Whereas network interface, elastic network interface has a scope, ability zones. So it's only a stay in one ability zones. And this is very, very important. I will show you and give you some scenario why you need to remember and why this is so important. Along with that, one important point, this elastic network interface, we can move across different AWS resources. So we can move elastic network interface across different AWS resources. Let's say if you have created this EC2 instance and here you attach your, let's say secondary elastic network interface. And XYZ region, this EC2 instance goes down. Then if you create another EC2 instance, then you can move this network interface to your second EC2 instance. But only condition it, it must be in same ability zone. So when we do that, then when we move this network interface to second resources, another resources, so this network interface also move its private IP address, elastic IP address and MAC address as well. Guys, if this is clear so far, give me thumbs up. So, Pranjal Pandey is asking, could you please recap the previous concept because I had not enrolled earlier. So, no worries Pranjal, go ahead and watch the previous videos, okay. Perfect. I saw. I see so many thumbs up. So looks like all clear to the paper. Super. Now let me clear my screen. Now let's understand what is use case of elastic network interface. Okay. There are a couple of good use case, and this is again very very important if you are preparing for AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate Certification. So first use case, and you can directly see this use case inside your certification exam. So first use case is Elastic Network Interface help us creating management network. What does it mean management network? Let's understand with the example. Let's go to the previous screen, not previous screen, let's go to the next architecture. So here you see we have this VPC and this VPC has two subnet. One is subnet A and another is subnet B. And the one thing if you see here, subnet A, though this is subnet A, this is in AZ1A ability zone and subnet B is also in same ability zone AZ1A. What does it mean? It means if we create any network interface, this network interface can move from this subnet to another subnet. Why? Because they are in same ability zone and that was one of the condition of elastic network interface because its scope is ability zone. Correct? Now, this is our web server. And this web server has two elastic network interface. One is ETH0, another is ETH1. So here, ETH1 has the elastic IP address and this private IP address. And you see in this root table of this subnet, we are saying if 
any resources from this subnet want to access the internet then it can go to the icw what does it mean it means here we are allowing internet access through this network interface and again here we have security group on eth1 if you see here and this security group what we have set we have set the rule so it can allow tcp port 80 from the internet whereas if you see eth0 and here we have if it want to access to the internet it will go to the bzw this is nothing but virtual private gateway and virtual private gateway we use to connect with our on premises or corporate data center so now here eth1 is used for internet access whereas eth0 is used for SSH access. Now see the this security group. This is attached with ETS0. So we are saying allow TCP port 22 that we use for SSH from this IP address. And what is this IP address range? This is our on premises data center IP address. Right? So what was the first use case? We can use for management network, right? So this network interface is used for internet access and this one is used for SSH from our on-premises network. Perfect. Now let's go back to the use case. Second use case could be we can use for MAC based licensing. What is MAC based licensing? So if you remember when we create an elastic network interface then elastic network interface has the private IP address, public IP address and MAC address, right? And this MAC address remain till we have this elastic network interface. And if you have been working with the enterprise, if you know, if you don't know, don't worry. Some of the software like IBM DB2 or Oracle, so these are MAC based licensing. So if you use those software, they will ask, give me the MAC address where this software is going to be installed. Okay. So in that case, this is very, very helpful. How this will become helpful? Let me give you a very simple example. So let's say here we have this VPC and this VPC has this private subnet and here we have launch the RDS and on this let's not call RDS let's make it so let's assume this is our EC2 instance okay this is the public subnet public subnet and this is our EC2 instance on this EC2 instance we have installed IBM DB2 and then we want our database need to be high available okay so what we'll do again, we'll have the another EC2 instance where again, we'll install our IBM DB2. Okay. And we will set up the replication of our database from this instance to this instance. Okay. But IBM DB2, if you purchase the license, they will give license for the MAC address, one MAC address, right? So here, what we do, we can create our, let's say, ETH, let's say, to network interface and we use this MAC address to get the license. So if X or Z reason, if this instance goes down, we can attach this network interface to our new or existing EC2 instance where we have the database replica available, right? So here you see this we use for the MAC based licensing, right? So this help us guys if this is clear give me a thumbs up this is very important concept if you are preparing for AWS certified solution architect associate certification very good i see a couple of thumbs up now next example is it help us creating low budget high available solution okay so if you remember the previous example what i was giving for ibm db2 right so it's again satisfied this point as well right first point 
you can use the MAC based licensing with elastic network interface creating the secondary network interface and again we have seen how this was high available right so in our public subnets when we have the two EC2 instance and if this goes down so we can use move this network interface to the secondary EC2 instance right so this will help us making our application high available and this is again very important concept let me give you another example if you work with the real time customer okay you will see there will be some application that application need to be running on single EC2 instance because of there is multiple regions now maybe the way application is designed there is so many dependencies the application is not is completely stateful is not stateless right because of those regions our EC2 application can run on single EC2 instance but this is our application where we are serving the real time customer when we are moving to the cloud so customer will ask hey I'm moving to the cloud would we still make my application high available we can say yes we can do that how using elastic network interface right same way we install everything the way we have done for the primary issue to instance on secondary issue to instance we create the secondary network interface if this goes down okay we'll move this here okay maybe we need to write a small python script so this will keep checking if this instance is getting down going down right then this will go ahead and start this issue to instance and move this network inter interface to the new issue to instance okay perfect guys so these are a couple of example i wanted to cover over here if all good give me a thumbs up now we will move on the next topic security group and we will also see it's some of its consideration if you have any questions don't worry park your question i'm going to answer your question in the last but meantime let me give you the slido link so you can keep pasting your question over here so guys this is the slido and i'm pasting this slido here you have any questions write it down your question over here and I'm, i will take your question one by one okay let's go back to the slide and let me clean the screen go to the next security group what is a security group security group is a virtual firewall once again when we are talking about the cloud okay elastic virtual these are the common term okay and i have explained this very well in the introduction of the cloud okay if you go ahead and watch the initial videos about this introductions okay how to create your AWS accounts and all okay in cloud fundamental i covered all these points in the details anyways let's come back to the slide so what is security group security group is the virtual firewall that control inbound and outbound traffic to our aws resources so what is firewall so firewall is nothing but a device or you can say tool which protect our resources or you can say the application how it protect is protect with help of inbound and outbound rules now maybe you'll be thinking between what is inbound and what is outbound so let's understand so here see we have this vpc and this vpc has this public subnet right and here we have a ec2 instance and on this ec2 instance if someone from the internet trying to access this ec2 instance so what is doing on this ec2 instance is making inbound call right this incoming request so this is incoming request to this our ec2 instance so this is called inbound traffic when our ec2 instance going outside from this network and trying to access something from the maybe internet or maybe let's say you have, you have another network right 
is trying to access something from here. So this is called outbound. So inbound means if something is coming to our AWS resources, so this is called inbound. If something, if traffic going outside, then this is called outbound. So how security group help us? Security group help us protect any inbound request and also outbound request on our AWS resources. Okay. What are AWS resources? It could be EC2, it could be RDS, and this n number of services where we use security group. Okay. Now, how it's protect? So it's protect with help of inbound rules. Okay. So what is inbound rules? As I said, inbound rules is something when traffic is coming to resources, outbound is when going outside from your resources. So in security group, is something it looks like something like this. Okay. In security group, we allow traffic based on IP protocol, port, and IP addresses. Now let's understand from this screen. So here, understand for the inbound rule. So if this inbound rule or maybe this security group we are attaching to our this EC2 instance. So if some traffic is coming to EC2 instance, what we are saying? So when some traffic coming to our EC2 instance, so we know so which source here we have the source, right? So you can decide from which source this EC2 instance could be accessed. So here it could be some IP address, right? And on which protocol? Here we have the protocol. We can decide it could be a TCP, could be SSH, could be RDP, or could be even MySQL port. Okay? Then you could have the port range as well. So based on, let's recap. So in bound rule, we can define our this EC2 instance could be accessed from which source of IP address, from which protocol and which port range. Now same goes for the outbound rule as well. Now if this is our EC2 instance and now if traffic from EC2 instance going outside, then where it's going? It's going to some destination, right? Now in case of inbound, it was source. In case of outbound, it's going to be the destination. So which destination could be some IP address, which protocol and which port range. So this is how we define security group rules and we enforce the traffic. So what does it mean? It means it can, for the incoming traffic, we are only allowing those, this IP address, this protocol and this port range. And for the outbound, only this destination this protocol and these ports. Other than that, everything is blocked. Perfect. Now, let's look at some important point about security group. And again, these points are very, very important for your AWS solution architect certification. And first point is security group is a stateful. A state full means a state full means it's maintain the state. What does it mean? Understand with the example. Let's say here we have EC2 instance, and here if a request is coming from let's say 172.3.2.8 IP address, so this request is coming from this source then security group has the memory or has the intelligence to remember this IP address. So when traffic is going outside, you not need to explicitly allow this IP and the port and the protocol from this request has kept, it will be allowed by default. So it maintain the state that's why this is called stateful. I'm repeating once again. 
this concept is very very important you will see direct question in your certification exam okay so when you talk about the security about your network we have two concept need to understand one is the security group another is n a c l network access control list okay network access control list we will cover in the next session so for security group your security group is the stateful means if request is coming to your ec2 instance then it's maintain the states you not need to define explicitly in the outbound rule it will maintain it will remember it has this level of the intelligence so it's maintain the states that's why this is called a stateful guys if this is clear give me a thumbs up this very important question you can see direct question in your certification exam okay so security group it is stateful whereas nacl is and this here is stateless i will cover in the next session now next important point again you can see question in your exam so when you create new security group when you create new security group by default all inbound traffic is denied do remember so when you create new security group all inbound traffic is denied and all outbound traffic that's going outside of your resources that's are allowed by default okay so if you want to allow then you have to go ahead and edit your inbound rule otherwise it is deny by default so that's where second point come into the picture okay only allow rule okay another things again this very important concept for you to remember at least as compared to the n a c l in security group when we create a rule then rule is only allow you cannot go and deny the rule there is no way to deny the rule let me take you on the previous screen okay so here if you remember in our inbound rule or maybe outbound rule we can only allow we cannot deny there is no way to deny any traffic you can only allow it but this is something this is different in case of the nsl again i will cover in the next section okay so if you don't really want to allow okay then you not need to add the rules so as you see again fall back to the first second point right so by default this deny this nothing is allowed so if you don't want to allow don't add it if you really want to allow then go ahead and add the rule again this is very important for your certification perspective now let's go to the next point security group again don't have the any priority so if you see we had the five rules okay then this five rules will be evaluated one at a time there is no priority there is no matter you added this rule at the first place second place or third place okay it will evaluate all together there is no priority and next point is security group works at a instance level is it instance sorry security group works at a instance level okay so now this understand with the example okay so what happened so here we have the vpc we have the public subnet then we have the private subnet if you create a let's say ec2 instance here ec2 so we create security group for our ec2 instance and is attached with our elastic network interface the elastic network interface is attached with our ec2 instance so this is works as a resource level ec2 instance level okay whereas network access control is we are going to cover in the next session nacl and acl this is attached with our subnet so this is worked at a network layer okay whereas security group worked as a ec2 instance level this was the point now one important concept 
you need to understand about security group is security group chaining okay what is security group chaining guys before that if everything is clear give me a thumbs up and if you have any questions i hope you are writing your question on the slido link which i have shared okay perfect i see the thumbs up now what is security group chaining so here let's say we have the ec2 instance and this ec2 instance in our private subnet and top of that we have alp application load balancer so basically what do we want so our application load balancer would be accessed from the internet and then this load balancer going to access our ec2 instance so in security group what we can do in alb on alb inbound rule we will allow http port on 80 from the internet 0.0.0/0 means internet so it's allow http rule from the internet whereas for your web application or the app public app server which is in the private subnet this will be only access from where it will be only access from your load balancer right because we are running multiple ec2 instance here and we are trying to load balance it so in this case only we allow load balancer to access our web server or app server so here in our load balancer security group group we in the outbound rule we will allow traffic go out to our app server security group whereas in this app server security group for so inbound rule we will allow source is our alb security group alb security group okay so here we are chaining okay and we are tightening the security of our aws resources and this is very very helpful if this is clear give me a thumbs up and now let me give a very different example to understand this concept so let's assume once again we have this vpc perfect i see the thumbs up thank you so much now we have here public subnet and here we have private subnet private subnet and here we have let's say this ec2 instance and here we have the database now here we have the sc we also have here sc security group now in security group on the rds security group okay what should be the source basically this database only going to be accessed from this ec2 instance right so we know source here for this security group right source could be ip address right so what we can go we can go ahead and give ip address of this ec2 instance right but if this application is high available what does it mean it means we are running multiple ec2 instance right then this is not possible now what is other option other option you can go ahead and give ip address of this subnet right you can go ahead in the source we can give ip address of this subnet and if you know what is ip address of this subnet we have discussed in the previous session right what is mean it's mean any resources from this subnet can access our database do you think this is good practice not at all why because in this subnet maybe this is this all are belongs to the one application right and there could be we are running other application as well maybe this all are the app one and here we have app two right and here we have the app two database so if you give this subnet ip address here in the source mean even this application this application can access this database that is not secure so technically what we should do here 
ideally right when we are creating this application app one so this whole application will have one security group sg1 right and for this application we will have sg2 right so for this database this sg will go and for this application this sg will go right so this is called security chaining i hope you understand again this very very important concept for your aws certification and you will see direct question inside the exam okay so that's pretty much about the security group and what we achieve with the security group chaining okay this is layered security right we are layering down and another this called inter group communication so we don't want other application to talk to our backend database right a backend application so it's for inter communication application to application right one application for another application for another piece for inter communication and that's pretty much about the security group in next session we will go for the next topics it could be and this here and some other topics as well perfect so now our theoretical part will stop here now we have around 10 minutes and now i will take you all question so let me stop saving my screen discard and also stop